The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of Neil Thomas Ministries. Amen. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word as we've already been blessed as we've heard different things this morning. But we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you have sent him as the living word and we thank you for who we are in him. As we believe in him and as we understand all that you are, God, what you have given us, we can become truly what you want in our life. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts, give us understanding and fill us up with the true measure of what you are in our lives, Lord, through your word today, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk this morning about your identity, your personal identity in Jesus Christ, because we all have a personal identity. We have a name, we have a place we live, we have a personal fingerprint, unlike anybody else on the planet. We have a DNA, a genetic ladder, which has every detail of our physical identity. Amazing what can be found out from one hair on your head. So many things about us are in our uh, physical that identify who we are. And that's really important to identify who we are physically. But much more important is our spiritual identity, who we are in Jesus Christ. So just have a short clip for us to watch and just take a look at this. That's your experience. Can we give God all the glory for that? Amen. That's who we are in Jesus. We have a brand new identity. Now, that should really excite you, that you are now a new creation, a new creature. Through what Jesus Christ did on the cross when he died, he came to take away our physical 
past, all the things that you were identified for, and he came to make us all identically the same in him and making us this new creature. That's what this new creation life is, our identification now with him. We're no longer now what we were. We're no longer living in the old nature, with the old ways. That's the whole point of being born again, that we have the opportunity to be made brand new. Have you ever seen a movie where there's a um, a witness protection program and you see a family or perhaps one person for the sake of his own life protection, he has to be taken away to a new location, given a new name, a new address, even new family members. He has to completely give up his old life and take on now a protected new identity that the police or the government have given that person to save their life. Well, you and I have had the same. We've had a new protection program given to us by God himself. We're in God's protection program. And the enemy and the destroyer and the one, the prince of death, the prince of this world that is deceiving millions of people who wants to destroy people and keep them away from salvation, keep them away from who they are in Jesus Christ, is out there. And so Jesus gives us this new name, his own sons. He gives us a new position. He gives us a new address. We can actually live now not according to the earth and always bound to that address, but now to this new heavenly address. We can exist and have on earth now this new creation life identity. And I want to encourage you in your new identity. Your past doesn't matter. Your past is in the past Don't live in the past. Don't make your identity your circumstances. Your circumstances and your past are not what define you. What defines your life is the life of Jesus and how much of him you have received and believe. He says you're holy and you are. If you can't accept that you're holy and you still want to be unholy and think unholy, you will live unholy. But you are holy in your new identity. God sees you as holy. You know, the Bible says that as far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed all your transgressions. They don't exist in his memory. They exist in yours. But God has no memory of your past. It was cancelled. It was washed clean. It was removed like a slate. He just removed the slate and he rubbed off the board of your life. Every sin, every deed, everything that defined you, all your childhood experiences, all the things you did and all the things that were done to you were removed at your baptism in God's eyes. But see, we still live in this house and this house still remembers. And so this house is the issue. Just like a person in a protection, a witness protection program, they can think about their old life and what they gave up, but they can't go back to it because if they go back to it, they'll probably be killed. They'll be destroyed. They'll lose the opportunity to be free. They'll lose the opportunity that they have ahead of them. And as Christians, we need to identify ourselves now and learn what that means. And that's why we encourage the word of God in your life. To the young people, you don't need to be like your friends. You don't need to fit in. You need to fit into Jesus. Not like them. They should want to fit into you. You and I, we're the ones that shape now the identity for others. Because if a Christian can truly identify himself with Jesus, he will be what God wants in his life. If we are still looking for other things to give us some validation, significance, importance and self-worth, we will not depend on Christ. Our dependence then becomes about what we do and what we have done. And what you do is not who you are. What you do 
and what you've achieved, even your greatest of achievements, even the greatest things that I've done in my life, they don't define me. They may contribute in many ways to different things, but they don't define me. They mustn't define me. The only thing that should define your life is Jesus. And if you're going through trouble, don't let that trouble define your life. It says in chapter 5, 2 Corinthians 5, if anyone's a new person in Christ, he's a new creation. But just before that, in verse 15, it says, Jesus died for all that those who should live no longer should live for themselves. So there's the issue. If you live for yourself, you will never be able to take hold of who you are in Christ. In order for you to take hold of who you really are in Jesus, you've got to die. You've got to let go of all of the things that you think you are. You have to die. That's why that power of baptism has to happen by faith. You can no longer live like you were before. You have to make a choice to turn away from that. You can't go forward looking... I can't walk forward looking backward. You'll never move forward until you stop living for those things. So if, for example, you were a drunk, you're not a drunk anymore. If you were a wife basher, you are not a wife basher. If you were the greatest and smartest person of your class, that's great, but that doesn't define you. You're not that. We're all the same in Christ. We're all one in him. We're all sons of God, beloved, holy, elect, chosen. We're what he says we are. You see, if you hit yourself every day and think that you're a miserable waste of space, if you have nobody that has put inside of you any self-worth and you are battling so desperate. I read this, this morning a story of a man who lives on a cliff and that man on, that has a house living on the cliff here in Victoria has saved 160 people from suicide since he's been living in his house. He just goes out to the cliff and he talks to people and he brings them into his lounge room and gives them a cup of tea and saves their life. See, people don't know who they are. That's why they don't want to live. People that fall into the depths and places of darkness in the deepest places of anguish and depression don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. Their identity is in their problem. Their identity is in their lack. It is not in Jesus. And so when we can point someone to find themselves in Jesus Christ, find themselves in what he says, they will be true, filled, happy, purpose-filled people. They won't worry what anyone says. They won't worry what the past did. It will only serve to be used as a point of grace, to share grace with other people, to share what God has done. Even those things in your life that you could be struggling with really, in, right now in your life, if there's a challenge, don't lose your breath and energy focusing on that. Don't let that define your energy, your walk with God. Let Jesus, let Jesus in. He died so that those who should live no longer should live for themselves, but for him who died for them. So my question is, are you living in that resurrected life? Are you going to work or school or whatever you do? You're going into the day living. I'm living for Jesus. I'm living in the identity that he wants me to have. I'm living in him. Not for myself, but living for him. And if he died for me and rose again for me to do that, am I experiencing that victory? Because someone who's taken a hold of their new identity can walk in that new identity. They believe that they're holy. They know that they're holy. They know that they're blameless. They know what their purpose is. They're not trying to discover it. It's already there. It's right in front of them. And then it says in verse 16, Now, because we can now go on and live with him, therefore don't regard one another according to the flesh. 
Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we now know him thus no longer. So when we don't have our own identity in Christ, we are not able to identify in others Jesus as well. So if you find it hard to see Christ in someone, it could be because you don't see Christ in yourself. And it's really important that you see Christ in yourself so that you can see Christ in others. That's part of Christianity because otherwise if you just look at people for what they are and what they've done, you will be very disheartened. We could do that. What we would be doing would be removing Jesus from the picture. I just have asked a couple of people to share on this. I want Rebecca, would you please welcome Rebecca Baresi. She's going to share some words at the moment. As a young woman, with all the challenges of being a young lady, just to share with us what her journey has been in finding Jesus. So I had the privilege of growing up in a Christian family and being raised in this church and, um, you know, go to Bible, uh, Sunday school, youth, and then I also had the privilege of going to Bible college. And I was always um, a shy and reserved sort of person, didn't really know where I belonged, didn't really... Um, know who I was. Um, But when I went through college and studying the Word of God, um, I really found that identity that Pastor Sonia was talking about and, you know, through the love of Christ and understanding how much he loved us and what he's done for us and who he's made us through his blood, I discovered that identity and it changed me, you know, it brought me, it gave me a confidence that I'd I'd never known before and it, it caused me to walk in a way that I hadn't walked before and with a boldness because he did, um, revealed to me who it was that I was in him and I really found myself and so after college I went over to Vanuatu to do some mission work and with that confidence and you know really saw the Lord use me and reveal himself through me and reveal himself even more to me but um, I actually just want to share today what happens when you lose focus and when you forget who Christ has made you because You can have an understanding and you can grasp that, but if you turn your eyes away and if you, you know, start to listen to what the world's saying and what the world, um, who the world tells you you should be, you can quickly lose focus of that and it can take a toll on your life, it can take a toll on your walk and that's exactly what happened to me. I lost focus and just due to things that were going on in my own life and um, just some struggles I was having, just one little thought, one little voice that the, you know, the devil brings about a thought of worthlessness completely, you know, changed and took that identity from me. And I started to identify myself and look for an identity that was outside of Christ. And um, due to that, I actually developed an eating disorder and I became anorexic. And, you know, the world is always telling us as young people and old people that you should look a certain way and that you should be a certain person and that perfect is in this image and that's what I started to strive after I started to look for perfection in what the world said perfection was and I used to look at myself in the mirror and I would say you know if I could just get this you know lose this much weight if I could just get a little bit more skinnier then I'll be perfect then I'll be beautiful then I'll be loved you know and I started to identify myself with that and I even remember you know thinking well I might not be the greatest missionary and people might not talk about me as you know, the greatest preacher or the the greatest teacher or something, but they'll recognise me as the skinniest girl. And that, for me, like, I started to think that 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 would give me some sort of worth. And so, you know, I just thought, like, just a little bit, like, I'll just lose a little bit of weight. And so I did. And then when you you look again, you think, no, just a little bit more and just a little bit more and just a little bit more until your skin and bones, like, it just, it became consuming and I forgot. I honestly forgot who I was in Jesus. And, you know, it just, it took like a slap in the face. One day I just, I lifted my arms and I saw how skinny I was. And I just, it was like the Lord just slapped me. And I just realized, what did I do to myself? And I felt lost. I thought, I felt like I'd lost myself. I didn't know who I was anymore. And, you know, I couldn't find myself. I would read, but I felt like I didn't hear him. And I felt like I was so far away. And, you know, I just really thought, I need to get my life straight. I need to get my life back in line with Christ. So 
I really sought to do that, and it was a struggle. It wasn't hard. Uh, it wasn't easy. It was hard. But it was this word that brought me back to that truth again. And the more I read it, the more I remembered who I was in Christ, and I remembered his love for me. And it's that love that, you know, it healed me. It completely healed me. And Amen. there is a verse that I always held on to. It's in um, Song of Solomon's in chapter 4, verse 7. And it's, it's, um, it says, Oh, beautiful you are, my darling. There is no flaw in you. And when I read that, I remembered that my perfection is in Christ. And that's what made me perfect. And it didn't matter how skinny I was. It didn't matter what I looked like. It didn't matter, you know, the clothes that I wore. What mattered was that I was perfect in Jesus. And that's Amen. where my beauty lay. And that's what our beauty is. Like, this body's going to age. It's going to change. It's going to get fat. It's going to get saggy. It's going to, you know, lose its shape. But in Christ, we become more and more beautiful the more Amen. we get to know that's him, right. the more we understand his love for us, the more we understand, Amen. you know, who we are in him. We actually become more beautiful rather than aging and becoming more ugly like this body. So, you know, I just want to encourage us that and, and let you know if you do lose... If you don't, you know, stay in this, if you don't focus on him, you can lose that. You can forget. And I, I would never want anyone to forget because it just it takes a toll on you. Mm-hmm. But I praise God because I'm stronger now and I understand even greater who I am. And, you know, yeah. So mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Love her. It's important how you think what you allow yourself to think upon and what will happen. Let's welcome Ben Taylor. He's also got a great testimony of this. Good morning. Um, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name's Ben. And um, first of all, I just want to say, if my eyes get a little teary, it's because i got hay fever. It's not because I'm emotional. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so when... When I was growing up, I never knew what I wanted to be. I always had questions from your teachers, you know, they ask you and they get you to write down what you want to be when you're older. And I wrote down so many different things because I never knew the one thing I wanted to do. I never knew the one thing I wanted to be. And I just thought, oh, well, it's not very important now. I'll just wait until I grow up and then I'll know. But the thing was, I, I hit teenagehood and that's the time when you really start to build who you are. That's the time when you're really supposed to find out and know who you are. But it was at that time where I just realised I had no clue who I was. I had no idea what I wanted to do in this life. I had no clue why I was here, why I was alive, why I existed. I just thought, why am I even like walking? What, what is the purpose? Like, I don't understand. I was so confused and I was very... Like, upset because I just didn't know and I felt like I just felt completely I guess the word is lost because I just didn't know and and I remember year nine my parents got divorced and, and that was a real shock for me because I, I once again I was thinking when I was a teenager I'll, you know I'll just wait until maybe I'm 21 and then I'll know I'll, I'll go to university and I'll get a job and then I'll know who I am and or what I'm going to do but it didn't change Especially once my parents got divorced, the question just, like, it slammed me again. Who are you? What are you doing? Who are you? Who are you going to be? Who are you? And I could never answer the question. I just didn't know who I was. But let me tell you, that all changed the day I met Jesus. Mm, That all changed the day I was baptized. And I guess to explain that, um, I've got a little little, little bit of a story. Okay. All right, cool. Um, lately, I've been working with Pierre. Thanks, bro. And um, we were working at this house in uh, Maribyrnong. And it's a huge house. It's three stories. It's, he, the guy's got everything. He's got like, five different cars. He's got a Porsche. He's got like, an Audi, a Merc. He's got everything. And anyway, so we're doing like little jobs here and around this house. And I get to the place and I, I look out the front and there's, there's like this sort of like a little wall. And I looked inside it and it just had all this gunk. Just this thick gunk. It was all muddy and it was green. It was mossy. It was disgusting. Like it, it was honestly just like terrible. And I just looked at it and I thought, I hope I don't have to do anything to do with that. And Pierre's like, yeah, no, nah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, bro. Anyway, so a couple of days later, 
Yeah, he goes, hey, look, bro, we've got to clean that out. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, we've got to clean that out. I said, well, all right, let's get the pump. I said, there's no pump. I'm like, what is, what is this thing? And he goes, he goes, oh, it's a fountain. I said, no, it's not. It's a hole of gunk. All right, and he goes, no, it's a fountain. I said, sure it is. Anyway, so I said, how are we going to clean it? He said, grab the, grab the buckets. And I just thought, nah, this is going to be hard. So anyway, I had a good idea to get the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. And so what we do, we'd vacuum it up and then empty the vacuum cleaner into the bin and then empty the bin into the drain so it'll be all gone. So we're vacuuming up all this muck and it's thick. It's like the consistency of honey. It really was just disgusting. Like you lift the vacuum out and it's dripping down slowly. And it, it was just thick and it was like sludge. Anyway, so as we're cleaning it, I can start to see the bottom of the, of the fountain. I can start to see that, it, hey, this actually is a fountain. It wasn't just like a hole of gunk anymore. I could actually see this actually is a fountain. The more and the less uh, the gunk was there and the more it got put into the bin and down the drain, I could start to see that this, hey, this actually is a fountain. It's not just a hole of gunk. And I guess once it was, once it was done and you could, it was all clean and it was nice and it was, it was shiny, it was, it was just awesome. We filled it up with water and it actually became the fountain that Pierre said it was. And then out come all the water and it's splashing about and it's sort of fire out there. There's, there's a, such a good revelation in this. Anyway, so, and I guess before I met Jesus, before I met Jesus, I was that hole of gunk. I didn't know what I was. Nothing was clear. And it was just, like, disgusting. Like, on, from the outside, you look at it, it's a nice wall around it. It looks pretty, but, like, on the inside, it was just disgusting. And I guess... The way that we cleaned it is the same way that Jesus cleaned me and cleaned out my heart. There was once gunk in there, but now there's water. There was once disappointment mm. in there, but now there's joy. Amen. And you want to know where all that gunk went? I don't know, it's somewhere down in the drains of Maribyrnong. And it's gone and I'll never have to see it again. And that's the same thing that Jesus does. When he cleans your life out, when he cleans out all the gunk, he puts it in the bin and he throws it down the drain for you to never see again. And then he fills you up with the water. And then, and then you're filled with water and mm. then it's, you're actually who you're meant to be. The fountain is a fountain again. It's not a hole of gunk. Mm. Right? And I guess my identity now, it's found in Christ because the Word says that just as He is in this world, so are we. Just as He is in this world, so are we. And the same way He cleaned out the gunk is the same way that Jesus cleaned out my heart. And now it's filled with clean water, filled with the living water that will spring up like mm. a fountain. Amen. So my Amen. identity is found in Christ and no one else. Amen. Okay. Amen. So today, how does that relate to you? What can you identify with that? Have you got a label you put on yourself? Is there um, a focus you've lost? You used to feel very excited about Jesus, but you just don't anymore. You're not excited. You're not excited about who you are. You're not excited to live for him, to be identified. When someone looks at your life, what are they identifying you as? Someone that's happy, someone that's sad, someone that's miserable? Is that what you're being identified as? Are people looking at your life and thinking that? What does God see? What does God see? That's what's important. He sees that you have been made now whole. You know, Joyce Meyer makes a statement and she says, we are whole and we are healed. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That's our destiny as Christians. We're whole in Jesus. There is nothing missing in your life. Right now, there is nothing missing in your life. There is nothing you need in your life. You don't need to do or achieve anything. All that you need is in the man, Jesus. And we sang this morning, Jesus is the centre of it all. And that's where your life needs to find full identification in that fact. That is enough. Jesus being the centre of it all. It's the centre of what you are as a person. It's who you are now made in him. Because if you are no longer the old person but therefore being made a new creation and everything's passed away, everything in your life is new. 
Everything that you discover and do now in Jesus is brand new and it's refreshed and new all the time. It's not old, it's not decaying, it's not ugly. In the screen clip we saw there, it says, you're not the person you were, so why do you still want to be that person? Why do you care? You're not that person anymore. You're a new person. Your life is hidden with Jesus. Your life is actually hidden inside of the life of this man. You're hidden in him. That's incredible. I will make amends. I will thank God for his forgiveness. Are you grateful for the forgiveness? Are you grateful for what he did? I will make amends. Those amends in your life that you need to make, those changes, those things that weren't right that you have now the power to fix, you make it right. You can do that in Jesus if your identity is in him and your strength and power is in him. And then you can get up and you can move on in your new life as a baptised, born-again person, holy, pure, unstained and without blemish. That is holiness, to rise up in that new life and walk in that holiness. You're holy. You're holy. Whether you see that in yourself or not, that is the fact. Before God, you stand completely unstained, perfect and holy. You can't buy it. It is all because of what Jesus Christ has done. That's the message of one of the main doctrines in this ministry. That is the message that we are called as a church to preach around the whole earth, that we are to call men to repent, be baptised, and to understand that they have now been made holy. That's our mandate in this church, to carry that message. That's a very powerful message because many Christians sit in churches all over the world feeling condemned, feeling judged, feeling unworthy because of their behaviour, because they have not understood that by faith now they are holy. Their new identity has given them full access to God and they are completely perfect in his sight, no longer to be accounted with what has happened in the past. And maybe today you've put too much attention on something else in your life and you've taken away the focus, as Rebecca shared, off Christ Well, the Lord wants you to put that focus back on him. He deserves to be your focus, your identity, the reason you live, the purpose for which you live for. All that you are is in him. And every label, every um, accreditation you get, everything that is any value in this world physically, anything that you consider or regard as important is perishable and it's an illusion. It will all change Anything we lean on, anything that we focus on apart from Jesus is an illusion. It's all going to be left. It's all going to be wasted. So now's the time to take up that identification and become his in the world. His, wherever we are now, we can be identified and someone can look at your life and say, there is something about that person. I I know what it is. It's Jesus. Be identified for Jesus. In the words after this, in verse 17, it says, Now all things are of God, he who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us now a ministry of reconciliation. This is what God is looking for, men and women, teenagers who identify that they are now a new creation and will go out and take on this role as a minister reconciling other people to Jesus Christ, calling men and women to be reconciled back to God, calling them to turn to Jesus. That's the ministry we have been given as a new creation. Often we never hear that verse. We do, we do know that verse about being made a new creation, but how many of us know the next verse that says that now, because of that, we are a called person to be now a minister reconciling others to God? so that Jesus Christ can be reconciled, reconciling the world to himself. That's what he's come to do. He's wiped away your slate. Now, if you had a bad slate, and I had a, I had a, a very disgusting slate, it was great news. The opportunity for me to hear that Jesus could actually take away that life 
and actually give me a whole new life and start again, a fresh slate, that was the most exciting news that I ever heard. I wanted a new life. I wanted a new life. I wanted a new beginning. And maybe that's you today. You're here, you're listening, and you don't have Christ. You want a new beginning? Well, it's here, available to you. It's in the person of Jesus. It's by asking him to be your Lord. It's asking him to take control of your life and joining your new life now to him. And the old will be put away and buried as you get baptised and follow in his ways. Just to finish, in that witness protection program, this new program that we're in with this new identity, we're somebody to God. And here's just a few things that you are. I want you to take this into your week. You're accepted. Do you understand if no one else accepts you or likes you, that's okay. Learn to live with that. Learn to live with people that may not like you or approve of you. Maybe your father, your children, your mother, your friend, your brother, you have conflict with. Learn to live above the conflict by defining yourself in Christ in that situation. He accepts you. He adores you. He loves you. He says you're the apple of his eye. He has your name on his palm. He's crazy about you. What does it matter if man does not accept you? If you need that person to accept you, you are saying that what Christ has done is not enough for you. You see, when he is enough for you, you don't need the acceptance of anyone else. You like it and it's nice, but you don't need it. You don't need it. It's not what's going to make it or break it for you. You're significant. Your life is valuable. Your life is purposeful. Your life is a very, very particular blessing to God and to the people in your life. You're needed in your family. You're needed by your friend. You're needed and you're significant. You're significant in this church. Every person that is committed and submitted in this particular body is significant. You're important. You're here for a reason. You have a whole trolley of gifts, of things that you can offer. And if you want to, you can live in that. You can serve. You can give. There are so many opportunities to love people in our own church. But only a few take it up. You're significant. And you can make a big difference in someone's life. You can make a huge significance when you start to look at him and now be a minister on his behalf. That's what you can do with your life. And the third thing is you're free from condemnation and you're secure. You are secure. Your identity now in Christ is completely secure. It's locked. It's a signed deal. It cannot be changed. You are locked in into your eternity now with God. He's never letting you go. No matter what you do, he will not ever leave you. He will not forsake you and turn away. Even, it says in the Bible, even when we are faithless, he will remain faithful because he cannot disown you because you are his. He cannot disown his own. That's how good, that's how great his love is. The question is, if that isn't enough for you, then there's something spiritually wrong. You have not been born again, and you need to. You need to have a spiritual birth and experience this Saviour in your own life. And I want to invite you to come tonight. Come tonight. Come to church. Come and receive Christ. Come and be baptised into that life, into this new creation experience, and be born again. And to go out this week in your identity not in your name, not in what you do, not in what you have done, not in the trouble that is going on. That is not who you are. Who you are is in Jesus. You're a son of the Most High God. You're anointed and appointed and you're powerful in the Holy Spirit. You've got everything you need to have an exciting, amazing week. You've got the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to share the gospel with somebody else and breathe life into them because you are defined in Jesus Christ. Amen?
Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word, and we thank you for the work that you have done, Christ. You have made us brand new in yourself, and all we need to do is believe it by faith. Take hold of it in our heart and believe it. And I pray, Lord, that we will be a church that walks in that liberty to understand that we are defined by you. We are defined by your love, not by anything else. Nothing else can define us. All else will fade away and perish. But the only thing that we will hold on to that does make us who we are is that we are your sons. We are your daughters. And Lord, I just thank you for that incredible truth that we're a new creature in you, made in your own image. It's amazing, Father. We thank you. Bless the day, Lord. Bless our lives as we go out for you and cause many people to find Jesus through this church, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Bless you. If you have been blessed by this message, please visit our website, neilthomasministries.com and click on...